So what we're trying to manage is the systematic failures, number one, but also cybersecurity failures. The thing about the systematic is that it can only be eliminated, it's insidious, so it can only be eliminated by either changing the design, the manufacturing process, the operational procedures, the documentation, or other relevant factors. So this is the three P's. The other relevant factors, of course, are the people. Cybersecurity failures. This is a failure coming from a, as a direct and often deliberate cause, which can only be eliminated by ongoing threat identification and mitigation. Cybersecurity is an interesting one because a lot of people think that this is somebody sitting in a, in a university somewhere in China or in North Korea or whatever trying to hack in to facilities in the US. That's not necessarily the case because <clears throat> it depends upon the attractiveness of the target. And believe it or not, uh, a study that was done by Kaspersky in 2017 identified that over 54% of installed controls equipment had been compromised in some way or another by a cybersecurity incident. 54%. And here again, normally, 80% of the time, it is through internal, not external. In other words, it's people working in the facility. And of that 80%, only 20% is intentional. In other words, disgruntled employee. So, for example, with Saudi Aramco a few years ago, the, the Shamoon virus was introduced by a disgruntled employee and it took down 30,000 machines and it cost them millions to get back up and running. The other 80% is due to what we call just typical stumbling, fumbling and bumbling. People not understanding or realizing what they're doing. How often have you plugged your mobile phone into your laptop to charge it? Well, a mobile phone is one of the worst things for being infiltrated you could have. Bringing in infected media, a disk that has uh, a virus on it, a thumb drive that has a virus on it. Or even accessing sites that you didn't realize had Trojans. So, what we talk about when we talk about the cybersecurity risks is we talk about cyber hygiene. So this is where you can make your people aware of the do's and the don'ts, just simply raising awareness. Because Stuxnet, which I'm sure you've all heard of, was introduced through a thumb drive. The story is, again, whether it's true or not, that the Mossad had staked out a restaurant near the plant where a lot of the Iranian workers went for lunch and they threw thumb drives into the car park. And eventually one of the workers picked up one of the thumb drives and of course that was it. As soon as he plugged it in, it propagated and it found its way into the control system. So just being aware, making sure you scan things properly, that you, you don't plug your phone into your laptop or computer at work to charge it. Just be sensitive to that. Now some companies already have policies in place to stop all of that, but <clears throat> this is why cyber is important to understand. So systematic failures, we can reduce systematic failures through good functional safety management. Making sure, again, we raise people's awareness, we make sure that they're competent, and we make sure that they're properly trained and that they understand what their role and what they're doing and how that plays into the overall life cycle. And there you go, <clears throat> the three P's, the people, the procedures, the paperwork. So we should apply the same redundancy to these as we would to equipment to make sure that they're rarely created and then when they are, they're easily identified and promptly corrected. So a simple thing you could do, for example, if we go back to Texas City with the miscalibration of that piece of equipment, that level, if we identify safety critical pieces of equipment 
what we may decide to do is have a four eyes a policy. So our procedure says instrument tech goes out and he calibrates it, but then a more senior, experienced, either a supervisor or instrument tech senior, goes out and checks it. And again, you wouldn't do that for all the equipment, you just do it for the safety critical equipment. And that can avoid the fact that they make a mistake, because it can be easily done. So if, you, if, if the supervisor or the senior guy goes out and finds that the instrument tech has miscalibrated, he can call him back, he can show him, say, okay, you, you, this is miscalibrated, this is what you needed to do, this is, what, this is the step you missed or you, you did incorrectly in the procedure, and make sure. If the procedure's wrong, then the procedure should be easily corrected. So that's how we can handle some of these things.